young world, young world, a young world. La de la de. Yeah, buddy. I'm headed to the workplace, y'all. I gotta make a stop. I gotta make a stop. This will be Friday. What is the date today? That ain't what I wanted. This is Friday the 4th. I don't know what this car is doing, but they are lollygagging. Friday the 4th, I'm going to go get that money. The countdown is real. The countdown is real on my Colorado trip. I am headed that way. I am looking forward to it. And uh, once again, I've gotten some bad news off my friend and big bro, Curtis Davis. Rest in peace. Uh, unfortunately, he lost his life Memorial weekend. A uh, young lady, a uh, young person, uh, t boned him from the side. And uh, just after me mentioning, you know, some of the guys that we've lost, I have not lost any uh, brothers or sisters due to a motorcycle accident. But uh, I'm sadly to say that I have lost this one due to a motorcycle accident and he was a real good strong brother I'm here to tell you uh, Mr. Davis when we went to California is what I got a chance to meet him uh, he's one of D Porter's uh, longtime friends he hunts a lot he was a real uh, outdoorsman he hunt a lot he had a gold wing I think it was a 2003 with pulling the bush tech trailer uh, and he also had a chopper. He had one of those big fat tire uh, choppers, like OCC style choppers. And his sons, you know, he rode with his sons. You know, they went to Daytonas and stuff like that, and they did a lot of bebopping around on them choppers doing bike week. I think he worked for the railroad, retired. He's about 67, 68 years old. But he became a friend of mine um, doing that trip going to. Uh, California you know you get a lot of times your friends or somebody else's friend can be your friend and I, I made some good friends with them guys and uh, Robert Nighthawk tennis man aka's uh, he's one of them and I think they're keen some kind of way brother-in-law cousins-in-law but they ride together just so happen they ride gold wings but it don't matter what you ride uh, when it comes to us, as long as you ride and like to have a good time and, you know, uh, have some fellowship. But, you know, rest in peace, Mr. Davis. Man, doggone, he was, he was thinking about trying to go with us to uh, – he was thinking about trying to go with us to Colorado and um, – I guess about two or three weeks ago, his father passed. And if Curtis Davis was six to eight, ain't no telling how long his how old his father was, but you can tell they they've got some longevity in their blood. But uh, he just recently passed. His father passed, and he uh, was taking care of that bit, as he was telling me. And uh, hold on to that. Let me grab my lunch for the day at the subbing way. All right, here we go. I have just got my turkey club from Subway. And put a Jolly Rancher in my mouth. There's an airplane coming in hot, a Legion. And we are on the famous I Kill Your Highway. On the way to the job.
got a big old gap for Slappy. And I'll take it. Now let me get back to my story about Curtis Davis. Real good dude. What in the world is he doing? Real good dude. On the trip to, uh, to California about three years ago, my Facebook told me, it reminded me, three years ago you was here, here, and here. You know how Facebook do you. Well, he was the reasoning voice. We had 13 motorcycles, and I think it's about 16 people. A couple of them was two up. And he was the voice of reasoning with, um, on that trip, you know, you're talking about 13 or 16 personalities. For the most part, everybody got along great. I tell you, uh, on these trips, you know, they always say somebody has to be the leader or, or this and that and the third. And I guess that is true, but, you know, I don't mind sharing leadership, you know, especially if somebody wants to and knows how if they know the area better than I do. So Mr. Davis led us on quite a few days. He was out there for 17 days. That's a long time to get on one another's nerves, if you, if you catch my drift. And some of the biggest pushbacks off of people that I have ran into is military folks, especially if that military folk was had some kind of a holding position, like a drill sergeant, uh, something that he was over, some troops or some people. And, uh, ooh. Those have been, in my experiences, the guys that really kind of buck up against me, if you will. But, you know, hey, we adjust to it and let them get over themselves. But Mr. Davis, was the voice of reasoning between me and this one guy. It's like he was just bucking up against me, man. I'm like, like you know, uh, I'm gonna tell you that story when I get back off his interstate. It's storytelling time with Slappy Adventures. So, but wait till I get off the interstate. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, I just jumped off the interstate. I'm about to hit my favorite road going to the workplace, and that would be Edgemore. Edgemore Road. Well, get back to your story now. Checking this car out. He's going to bolt up on me there. Get back to the story. There go Edgemore Road sign. Uh, so we all are trying to get to, to learn each other on that first date. I started nicknaming them boys the shoulder hitters because every time we go about 20, 30 miles, somebody had to hit the shoulder. Somebody had to hit the shoulder. I'm like, what in the blue blazers is really going on? And this is before I even had a headset. So, you know, they gonna shoot to the front and hit the shoulder and then everybody pull over there. And it takes a little bit of while to get everybody back on the bikes. And I just told him, I said, next time y'all need to hit that daggum shoulder, y'all just go ahead and hit it. And I will text y'all the, the gas station, the, the gas stop exit, where we gonna be at. Cause ain't no need in taking 13 people to the daggum shoulder for uh, you got a, a, a shoelace hanging off. You, you, I, ain't, I don't know what I was going on back there. That fella might be on to something, man. He might be on to something there going on around that jack wagon, especially on that dotted line. Look at him out there fishing. So, uh, me and this one fella, I'm trying not to call his name, I think he was a drill sergeant in the Army. He was about five foot three, five foot two, something like that. So we had that Napoleon uh, disorder, if you, if you catch my drift. If you roger me, he had that little man disease, that Napoleon disorder, I call it. And uh, being a drill sergeant, you know, he already had that chest pumped up full of that old hot air. So 
It just seemed like he was just bucking up against me every chance he got. And I'm like, look at it, man. You know, what's the problem? So one of the problems he was saying was when I was leading, he said I was speeding up and I was slowing down. Speeding up and slowing down. And he chose to take the number two position. That number two position is just about as important as that number one in the rear. So I like, man, I'm not the one speeding up and slowing down. I said, you are. And if you want to do that, you need to get in the back. Don't get number two and you daggum back up and you slowing down, speeding up, and you got it spread out a whole country mile. No, man, it's you. You, you need to keep a certain pace. You need a dish and you need a that. I said, buddy, I've been doing this way too long. But I said, okay, we'll see. So we get out there again, jump out there. He's behind me. So I put the daggum cruise control on about 82. And I put my left hand here and I put my right hand on my hip. And that's why I stayed on the cruise control on 82. I'm looking in my mirror and they're getting smaller and smaller. He's falling back and back and back. And he's sitting up here, you keep speeding up, you keep slowing down, you gotta keep a consistent pace. I said, let me ask you something, boy. I said, what do you think it means when I got my right hand on my hip and my left hand on the, th on the uh, clutch side? I said, what does that mean to you? I don't know, I don't know. I said, well, you know the right side is the throttle. So if my right hand ain't even touching the throttle, I gotta be sitting on cruise control. And that's why I stay on cruise. So no, I'm not the one speeding up and slowing down, it's you. And I said, now, if you're going to do that, you need to get in the back and you can get off in the la-la land or zombie land or deal with your PSD or whatever you're dealing with back there. But quit breaking up the group. We stretched out a whole country mile, and it ain't no sense in that. Now, really, I don't really like to uh, ride in a real, real tight formation unless we're in the city and we're trying to get through it. But when we out there, just in, in, you know, we out there in the desert, just this wide open desert with nobody out there but us. And you got us spread out a whole daggum country mile. And then the first thing he want to holler, I'm speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. Nah, it ain't me, buddy, because I hate that. I don't do that in the driving truck trailer. That's you. And then you want to raise hell with me. But anyway, old Curtis Davis, back to him, he kind of stepped in there and kind of calmed him down and, you know, said, yeah, Slappy, you know, you're, you're doing a fine job. Don't worry about it. But he's a spiritual man, he's a, he's a God-fearing man. You know, he, he stayed prayed up, you know, he led us in prayer. And uh, I mean, he was the sensible mind on that trip. That's for doggone sure. And uh, he just really, really kept the peace. Then I uh, really appreciate him. You know, he, he's uh, definitely a big bro, but he kind of, you know, you know, took care of everybody like a father figure. You know, and, uh, outdoorsman. He knew a whole lot about, you know, outdoor stuff. So when we camped out, you know, he was right on top of it, you know. Uh, but that guy right there is truly going to be missed. And that jack wagon that was starting up all that shit, you see he ain't daggone road with me no more. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Robert... Uh, Tennis Man, a.k.a. Tennis Man, a.k.a. Nighthawk. Uh, you know, he called and confirmed after D. Porter did and, you know, was like, you know, he really wants to uh, do this trip with me. People are dropping like flies. What my granny would say, you know, you got to make your bed. When it's time to lay in it, make sure you made a good bed. When it's time to lay in it, nobody knows the time or the hour. You just got to be ready. And I'm trying to enjoy my life the best way I can. I try to live life the best way I can. And I'm a sinner. And, and whoever says they're not a sinner, you know, don't throw no rocks in a glass house. But, you know, I, I ask for forgiveness every day and try to live the best way I can. But, you know, get out here and enjoy yourself, man. And 
try to get the, the best out of it. I know Mr. Davis did. I mean, he was an outdoorsman. He hunted. He fished. You know, he rode bikes. He rode with his sons. You know, he took great care of his family. You know, seemed like a, a really, really great guy. So, shout out to Mr. Davis. Maybe I can find some pictures of us out there and give you a for instance of uh, old Curtis Davis, man. This is a shout out to you, but bro. Man, boy, we, we losing some good people. Losing some good folks out here. But this will be my route to work. I'm gonna stop at the, I'm gonna stop over there at uh, O'Reilly's and pick up a few items. And then I'm gonna ease on in here if I can't put a couple of nickels together so I can rub when I go to Colorado. All right, about to get on the turnpike. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching another episode of Slappy Adventures. Please like, share, and comment. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Stay tuned for more videos like these. Thanks for watching.